Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. This is the dopest podcast in the DMV. Yes, sir. The HL podcast. Yes. You see it? Yes. Uh, it is our HL Thursdays. Um, today is February 24th. 2021 all right still black history month definitely um we're going to continue to celebrate it uh we're presented to you all by the harris firm willpower innovation yes sir i am am rock alongside your boy chief yeah we in the building this week yeah last week was a little tough but we hit facts yo yeah we basically been off for two weeks yeah i mean last you know, week was crazy but yeah last week was <laughs> But it's all good. We 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 here. I think I think God was just telling us, look, no, y'all niggas need to be together. I think He said that. To you. <laughs> like, just take another week off. Yeah. Y'all more powerful like this. So I yeah. Agree. Yeah. People, please check out our previous episodes and interviews on our YouTube channel and all major podcast platforms. Um, the interview we just did last night. <laughs> Uh, was incredible with your boy Nigel. Yeah, shout out to um, Nigel, man. Uh, you know, the next boxing champ, we going for 10 and 0 10 down and there 0. in Columbia, South America. Yeah, good luck down there, yeah, man. Yeah, man, facts, facts. So definitely check that out. That's on YouTube right now. And uh, it's uploaded to all major podcast platforms. It'll be on iHeart probably tomorrow. Yeah. Um, please follow us on IG, TikTok, and Facebook at the HL Podcast. We thank everybody that's following us right now. Uh, you can view us on the Roku platform, Apple TV, on the Politic and app uh, via Politic and Broadcasting. All right. And lastly, this past weekend, uh, the HL Magazine, you know, ran by you know a couple of guys, you know, um, what's their what's their names again? Ch- Chief and Amrock, right? Oh yeah, that's us. <laughs> Hi, yes, the, that is HL, funny. the HL Magazine <laughs> dropped this seventh issue Woo. this past weekend. It's been incredible. Um, mm. the, 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 the love, the love, um, you know, it's, it's awesome when you're doing something and you're doing it for fun and doing it because you love to do it. Um, you know, the love, um, you know, that we got people re- reposting, um, you know, so... Can't so make just, it up. Yeah, so just, we gotta break this down. So real quick, you know, the cover, <laughs> unbelievable. Thanks to, first of all, Visions That Transcend, all the graphics. Mm. Shout out to, to BTT. Glory to God. We told you um, them colors kind of look resembling that oh, right yeah, there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> y'all see the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if y'all ain't know we were serious, yeah, now you know. Right. Um. Then we got the entrepreneur of the month shout out to em shout out to uh candace reels yes a female um, collective yes, yeah definitely. doing doing big things mm-hmm. um what's trending in the dmv um the you black know creators yeah, went shout, crazy shout, on that shout out to black witch creators mm-hmm. uh you know read that and, and what please. we're talking about for the dmv please um uh, of course then em drops the artists of the month uh shout out to oh, chris, man, clark. chris clark chris yes, clark so, uh-huh. um dope artwork you know Man, and, and power and what was beautiful about um both candace reels and chris clark pro black you know artwork and and business and yes sir. you know just the you know what they represent just definitely dope um executive order 8802 they weren't ready for that one <laughs> <laughs> they weren't ready for that one uh mm. you know that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. Um, and then, hmm. you know, we dropped the movie reviews, um, and you know the responses from that. Uh, we dropped movie reviews for. We did movie reviews for all four of the major black films that came out over the past month. Uh, so we started off with One Night in Miami, mm-hmm. uh, which is still available on Amazon. Yeah. People, please go see that. Definitely. Um, Malcolm and Marie. Uh, you know, a uh, very good film. Great acting. Great acting um, by Zendaya and uh, John David Washington. American Skin. You know, uh, we sat here and watched that. That was, you know, it didn't end how it should have. But nevertheless, the message and the dialogue. I agree. That was transpiring was very important for people to hear. I agree. And then, of course, uh, we had, we had to do a review on Judas and the Black Messiah. Yes. Um, 
that literally was the only reason why we <laughs> held out the magazine to the 20th. If y'all didn't know why, why I was taking it a little time, that why. That is why. And if you read it, first of all, watch the movie. Then yeah. read the review. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you. Watch the watch the movie, watch the documentaries, read it yeah. up on Fred Hampton and William O'Neill. Yeah. And just the Black Panther Party in general. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, all of the, and read about the FBI and J. Edgar Hoover, you know, <laughs> yeah. you can't, we can't just, just like, um, you know, sometimes we watch Fox News, right? You can't just listen to one side. As much as we want to be, um, you know, just listening to one side and as, as much as we are pro-black and want to just, you know, focus on our black people, you still have to hear what other motherfuckers are saying. I agree. That's why American Skin is such a, uh, a good film. Cause it gives you that dialect on what these cops really think and how they truly feel. They said it all. They said it all they in that movie. Great all. writing by Nate Parker. Agreed. Um, you know, like that. That's that's what films are supposed to do, and especially um, Black on Side. That's exactly what that did. Um, mm -hmm. It put for me, um, and you, you know, anybody who knows me, I'm a film guy. I, that's definitely in my top five films of all time. I agree. Um, I agree. You know, I have various different films with various different reasons, um, such as like Eight Mile, but it's for a different reason. You know, old white rapper, in it, but it's for a reason why I enjoy that movie. Mm -hmm. Jewish and the Black Messiah moved me more than any other movie movie ever. Agreed. Did probably since Antoine Fisher. Like that's Ooh. probably the only movie. Antoine Fisher is like the only movie where I like shed a tear because that's it's such a powerful story. Oh, very powerful. And that could be any one of us. And that's how Judas and the Black Messiah made it. Again, when you see Fred Hampton die in a movie and how they kill him, a part of you has to die. If you if mm. you don't feel that, then you're not you're not feeling it. You're not in tune. You're not in tune with it. Mm. A part of you had to have felt like you died because that could have been that could have been Chief, that could have been myself, that could have been any brothers we know. You know, our own brothers, our own nephews, our fathers, grandfather. That could have been any one of our, you know, uncles mm. or, you know, Deborah Johnson's pregnant. That could have been, Facts. you know, the wives Facts. pregnant and a gunpoint. You know what I mean? Facts. So. You know, it's just a very important film, but you know, the love, you know, people viewing it, um, you know, as we reposted it, American Skin Film, shout out to American Skin Film hey. IG page. They reposted the whole mag. The whole mag, bro. Um, you know, so just just blessings, just blessings across the board. Of course, shout out to the sponsors, Sunray Creations, uh, Allure, Crush Mode, uh, Crush Mode oh uh, EM. Uh, Visions, Harris Firm, Black Lotus is on the there. podcast. Black, shout out to Black Lotus. Yeah, um, who will put it on the website? Shout out to them. So, if I if I miss anybody, I'm sorry, but um, yo, it was it's just incredible. It's been incredible. Uh, so you know, if myself, if I look and sound a little tired, that's why yo, we've been focusing. Like man, been, we have. We've been trying to get it. Yeah. you know, and I and, agree. and it's all it's all been worth it. You know what I mean? So. Glory to God for that. Definitely so yeah, glory so to God. please check that out. I say all that to say. Please check that out <laughs> on our IG page, HL Mag, and uh, it will be up on the Black Lotus website as well. Yeah, all right. Soon. People, as always, we got a great show. On this date, the most known unknown. All right, Chief, of course, gonna drop some of his wisdom. Mm -hmm. Shisha of the day. All right, I'm still trying to think of think of a name for this, but I'm, I'm gonna smelling come it. With but it. yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna come up with it. Uh, the HL yeah. News. We're gonna get into sports. What's happening in culture, politics, and society? Uh, our top five Orton. Um, so last week, as Chief alluded to, we had some technical difficulties. We couldn't get to this top so, five or ten. I feel like it was a lot. Oh yeah, true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> like, some is an understatement. So we, we couldn't get to this top five or ten. Uh, so I was like, no, we got to move this. this. This one has to be set. Agreed. So we moved this one over, and of course we're going to finish with a little bit with Round Rock. So first up. Let's get it. The most known unknown. Uh, we got an RIP today. Um the legend okay uh most people and we, again we call this most known un most known unknown because a lot of people did not know this woman before hidden figures facts straight up if you did you're lying yeah and nobody knew who the late great miss katherine johnson was um you know and, and it's unfortunate 
uh, before Taraji played her in Hidden, Hidden Figures. Well, she did a great job. You know, mm. I take anything away from Taraji, but you know, it's unfortunate that you know a lot of black. You know, we you know sit here and watch documentaries all the time and like, oh, who is that person and this person. Still, there is still a lot of black people throughout our history we are not aware of who contributed so much, mm. so much, but... And probably um, would never be in the social study books. Facts, facts. It's crazy. So this lady, uh, Heather Catherine Johnson, was born August 26, 1918 in West Virginia. Oh, West um, Virginia? Yeah, in West, know that. in West Virginia. Yep, yep. Ain't that something? Um, you know, she she ultimately she went to West Virginia State College. Um, and yeah, that's one of my sister's alma mater. Shout out to West West Virginia State College. The Yellow Jackets out there in Charleston. Um, so she, I, you know, now people know the story, right? She mm -hmm. went on to work for NASA uh, for thirty five years. Um, great mathematician. Uh, helped with um, launching a lot of different um, projects. Uh, especially with space flight, especially going to space and going, you know, going to the moon and those different operations. Uh, she was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom hmm. in 2015 uh, by then President Barack Obama. That makes um, sense. And she was also in 2019, um, a year before she passed away, uh, was awarded the Congressional Medal, Gold Medal of Honor. That's so, uh, yeah, I think that's one of like, you know, Nobel Prize, yeah, you know, yeah. so. Um, hmm. Great, great accomplishments. You know, unfortunately, they were towards the end of her career. But again, I mean, the end of her life, rather. Um, but, you know, again, a lot of people didn't know about her. You know, she was very behind the scenes. Um, and, you know, being in NASA, you, you know, you in that bubble, right? Yeah, you really secret, are. Though. You know, yeah. so, mm -hmm. you, you know, you get why. But mm -hmm. she should definitely and always be remembered. Agreed. Um, and so on this date, February 24th of last year, she passed away at 101. Man, she hit the century mark. 101. Plus one. God hey bless her. now, yes. God yes. bless her. So, yeah, man. Hmm. Yeah. That's tough. This is a perfect one, especially for... Um, you, you ask that question um, all the time, like, please give advice to the young boys and the girls on what they... Mm -hmm. I wonder how much advice Mrs. Catherine Johnson was just giving out all this wisdom and knowledge that we didn't even hear. Facts. You know, that's probably tape. That's probably in book form. That's just waiting. I can only imagine. Because mm -hmm. she had to be a strong woman, especially after... Um, watching the movie and yeah, me too. I'm a I'm a corporate of uh, not knowing who she was until after the movie. Um, me too. Me too. Definitely. Right. It's, it wasn't in the book. Yep. Right. Just imagine the stuff that she knew, man. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. And you know, and it's okay if you don't know or if you're ignorant. But once you do know, <laughs> and once yes, you're sir. no longer ignorant, yes sir. You know, to then, you know, just be dismissive. That's the problem is what they call foolish thank you thank you so you know once you know people like uh miss Catherine johnson you have to show them homage and respect I and agree. always um acknowledge you know that they were contributors um uh, you know and especially in her case you know contributing not to just math and science but like you said <laughs> contributing to being a role model oh my goodness. for all the young black women who hmm you know, maybe thought math was hard yeah. or weird or, eh. Yeah. Oh, she she did it. Oh, she worked for NASA mm -hmm. and, you know, was probably, hey, making some bank and got oh, a movie well, hey, Taraji P. Henson play her. That's, that oh, should man. be inspiring. So, okay. um, rest in peace, uh, Catherine Johnson. Yes. Uh, you will forever uh, be missed. Again, passed away um, last year as we lost many in 2020. It would, you know, throughout this year, we'll probably be doing a lot of passed away last year yeah, yeah. um but uh to be 101 to live you know 101 years blessings blessings definitely and for our second most known unknown i did not know who this woman was at all um but rebecca lee crumpler Crump crumpler thank you crumpler born rebecca davis in february 8 1831 Okay, uh, she passed away on March 9th, 1895, so she lived for 64 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, how and why is she a contributor to history? Not just black history, to history. Okay, now 
you'll hear a lot of first, right? Or oh, the first black this, first black that that we do. Um, but people are still contributing to history, period. Black history, American history. Um, in this case, female, women's history. Um, you know, and just history in general. Katherine Johnson, you're, she's in the history books, period. When you contribute to helping astronauts get to space. And back. And back. And figuring out math problems that most of them white so-called scientists or astronomers or whoever could not solve or figure out. Yeah, it showed in the movie. She had to go in there and write on that whole board. Facts. And she's doing it. That's your contributor to history. So, hmm. Rebecca Lee Crumbler, Crumbler, right? Crumbler, yeah. Uh-huh. Crumbler. Um, she is the first in 1864 on this day. She became the first black woman to become a doctor of medicine in the United States. Wow. She she studied at New England Female Medical College. Now let me see what is that called today. Uh, Yeah, I think it's- That's a great question. Oh, Emerge, oh. Boston University School of Medicine. Huh. Emerged. They Back merged. in 1874. Hmm. And I think that's a very prestigious, like MIT up there. Facts. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's like the MIT for medicine. Hmm. Um, wow. She was one of the first female physician authors in the 19th century. Not black female, the first females. Hmm. Black or white or Asian or whoever was around at that time, hmm. right? Um, so peep this. After the Civil War ended, guess where she moved to help treat women and children? Guess where she moved? Where? You already know. DC, VA, MD, Maryland? Which one? You close. You said VA. So she moved to Virginia. Richmond. She was in Richmond after 1865. RVA. RVA to help treat women and children um it was part of a missionary work that she was doing so we lived there we went to school there was this in the school books i I don't understand how stuff like this is so monumental Hmm. i can see if if it says she moved to california okay but that's right up the street from us she didn't hit no pamphlet or nothing that's crazy at all she also worked for the freedmen's bureau Hmm. to provide medical care for free slaves. Wow. Now again, if you're the first female MD, it's like, yeah, everybody would be <laughs> coming to you of for, course. for medical yeah, attention. Yeah, my leg hurt, my you know arm hurt. That's crazy. Like, yeah, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy. Wow, um, RVA. RVA, she was born in Delaware. Um, she later resided in Boston, okay, okay. Um, you know, where she went to school mm-hmm. um, and continued to treat men and women there pretty much up until uh, she passed away. Hmm. Um, but again, you know, people like Rebecca Lee Crumbler uh, need to be uh, talked about and remembered Agreed. again. You know, I didn't know who she was before I looked her up. Um, and I'm sure many of you do not know who this woman is. Uh, well, see, now you know. Now I know. They don't, you know what I mean? <laughs> Y'all don't know yet. Look her up, right? Right. Um, you know, because people, you know, any person uh, that that's first this or first that is is significant. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, you know, the first female, first black woman, for, that's incredible, especially mm at a time, and we'll get to this later, um, at a time where, you know, in the Constitution, there's no women, there's no black people written anywhere in there, okay? Written in mind. You know, rights and the right to do this and the right to do that and to vote and to be elected official and to own businesses. And that wasn't, a lot of people just think that was discriminatory against just black people. No, it was also discriminatory against women. So women, have two. Yep, they're double minorities. Double minor. Thank you. Double minorities. Black and females. It's crazy. Crazy. You know. So, 
Rebecca Lee Crumler, um, may she rest in peace. Um, and thank you for your contributions. You know, Definitely. when we see <laughs> female female doctors and black female doctors, you need to think of Rebecca Lee Crumler. I agree. People, people, this is the HL Podcast. That is Chief. I am Am Rock. Yeah. People, please follow us on IG, Facebook, and TikTok. Right now, uh, the man, the myth, the legend, long live the chief. Uh, he's about to, he's about to drop some of his wisdom uh, for you. Uh, again, I, I'll say it as I said it uh, two weeks ago for y'all, William O'Neills out there. You wild, bro. Um, uh, for y'all, Jay Eggers mm. out there. Uh, what's my man for y'all, Agent uh, Mitchell's right out there? Especially him. Good um, lord. Crazy, but 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 go mm. ahead, go hey, ahead, Chief. Appreciate you for always being the game, Coach. Yeah, man. Hey, man, that's a great introduction, by the way. <laughs> Perfect introduction. But today, man, of course I want to keep it uh, short and sweet, but I also want to do what they call drive the nail mm-hmm. into the point. Mm-hmm. I wanted to drive the nail on what both purpose and true leadership mean. Uh, I told y'all I gave y'all a break of, of Dr. Miles Monroe for a while, but now he on part 39 because. <laughs> It's this time, man, yeah. where we, we got to hear it, including myself. Um, I just don't, EEM just don't put out these videos just for, you know, I myself was still going over and listening to it over and over again, mm-hmm. just letting it just soak in. And he spoke on um, Genesis 1, 11 through 12, which 11 and 12 are pretty much the same verse. Uh, and it says, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seeds and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its uh, kind. And this is the most important part that I want you guys to get out of this. Whose seed is in itself. Whose seed is in itself. And Dr. Miles Monroe switched it around and said, this is what this means. Mm -hmm. That God have placed the seed of everything in itself. So to me, that speaks purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, we're born with the seed. And he'll say Satan or the devil is in the business of uh, seed killing. Right. Well, he likes to kill you in seed form. And if you guys don't understand um, what this means, I kind of bought uh, a presentation. If you don't, if you don't know what it means, I have I have this grape here, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and it's hard if you if you eat uh, non-seeded grapes, you know they fake because the seeds have to be mm-hmm. in the grape for it to be real. If you're eating grapes and not spitting out these seeds right here, mm, it's kind of tough to say. But inside of this grape is this seed. If I plant this seed, I get a whole grape, free, uh, grape tree or whatever, or the vine or however you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Then we eat these grapes, plant another one. So what Dr. Miles Monroe was saying, inside of this seed is a whole forest. So if the devil kills this, he kills a whole forest. This is, in, this is presidents. This is... Uh, new mm-hmm. artists, new um, filmmakers, new screenwriters, mm-hmm. new athletes, anything. If you take out one one human being that has the seed inside of them, mm-hmm. you know? So I can't, like I said, mm-hmm. can't really trust the, any fruit without the seed. It's born in it to create more, to get this, to create more, to get this, to create more, right? So that's purpose. If you didn't understand purpose, we were born for that. We were born with the seed and then to create, to grow, to multiply. Um, and then true leadership, I kind of wanted to play this video that I had to play over and over again today. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to play it right now. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. It is unique attitudes that distinguish leaders from followers. These attitudes that a leader possess produce certain behaviors that stretch the leader beyond the limitations of the norm. Boom. Stretch the... Hold on, let me, let me play that back. Stretch the leader beyond the limitations of the norm. Stretch the leader beyond the limitations of the norm, meaning whatever kind of earthly standards and stigmas they put on you, true leaders. Like what we have right now is kind of just leaders. I'm talking true leadership. Stretches you beyond that. You know, they can't put no standard on you. Leaders, because of the way they think, always live beyond the normal society. They never accept what you tell them. Leaders never believe your limitations because they have discovered some truth that makes them defy 
on convention. Hmm. That's what makes him a leader. Matter of fact, the very concept of leading means you are leaving the present conditions behind. You cannot lead and maintain. Leading literally implies you are leaving something. Mm -hmm. That's why a true leader always breaks tradition. That's why a true leader always breaks tradition. So if a leader's here in um, still trying to carry on with regular traditions, sound very familiar, what's going on in America, that's not true leadership. Because the very concept of leading means you are leaving the present conditions behind. So once you add purpose, you see, and you add true leadership, to me, that's equals greatness. Purpose is to see true leadership um, as the cultivation of that seed mm -hmm. turning into a forest, mm -hmm. right? So I wanted to bring that back up and just nail, you know, what these both things mean because it's true. It's not just a word that I found to just put out there. Purpose is real. Ask this great. True leadership is real. Ask Martin Luther King, Katherine Johnson, uh, Rebecca Lee Crumpler. Ask them. You get what I'm saying? True leadership isn't real now. Ask uh, Chadwick Boseman, who was hurting and still gave you six hitters, eight hitters. You get what I'm saying? So we just have to, and then if you don't understand your purpose, that's fine. It takes, it takes some time. But that's why our purpose is to seed. Leadership, true leadership, is the cultivation of that seed so that it can turn into a forest to produce fruit, to get more seeds in all the way around. So mm -hmm. once again, the very concept of leading means you are leaving the present conditions behind that you stress beyond the limitations of the norm. You know, remember this, rewind this back if you need to see that, with, what's inside the grape, mm -hmm. and I am guarantee you, like Genesis said, like God said, he has placed the seed of everything in itself, which means he placed greatness inside of us, which means all we got to do is find purpose and become true leaders. That's our chief wisdom for the day, man. Glory hey. to God. Hey, chief, thank you. As always, Ooh. glory to God for dropping your wisdom. Man. I, have, I have two two things yes. real quick I want to respond to with that. Um, for one, uh, how the hell do they get the seeds out the grape? Exactly. I, I just thought about so that. So, I mean, it was birthed that way with mm. no seed. Mm. It was grown that way with no seed. Think Interesting. About that. And then the, the where Dr. Miles Monroe said uh, you can't lead and maintain. maintain and things basically can't be the same. Mm. Uh, I just thought of a... Uh, jay-z quote where he said uh you know sorry mama i promise yes sir what did he, damn what did he say so sorry sorry mama i promise it wouldn't change me but i would have went insane had i remained the same me i remember when you told me that quote like that immediately just came to my mind like yo like that's that's real yeah like you can't like when you're trying to grow you know you're not gonna be the same you no um because you know, you're going to experience different things, different people. Exactly. That, you know, oh, no, I got to move this way now. I got to change this up. I got to, exactly. okay, now I got a team. Now I got to lead differently. Now I got to, you know, do. So, exactly. Yeah, so that's very important. Do Like, do you think this great want to stay in this form? Like, don't you think you want to grow into a, the greatest grapevine ever? You know, like, growth is amazing. Growth is who we are. Without growth, who is MLK and any of these folks that we talk about all the time? Dr. Miles Monroe, us, Chief and Amrock, what is growth with what is us without growth? Right. So you plant this, cultivate it, you got greatness, man. Facts. Yes, we got the equation of greatness. Facts. Big facts. Oh yes, sir. Uh, so let's see what you got. Uh our shisha of the day. Um you know. Where, where do all of us come from? The woman's womb, right? Yep. Mother Earth. <laughs> That's the type. Dang. <laughs> I did not expect you to get that. Wow. That's the first on the um, HL podcast, right there. Mother Earth. I'm just thinking about, you know, when you think about people and what people fail to understand, first of all, I thought about it because all you know, all the incredible women that we just you know, Katherine Johnson and Man, what? Rebecca Lee Crumpler and, and Deborah Johnson yeah. and and you know, just a whole bunch of incredible uh, women throughout our history. Um, a lot of them not known as they should be. 
um, Ida B. Wilds, you know, just comes to mind, you know, um, a whole bunch of extraordinary women. But when I look at, especially like these documentaries, True Nina Simone. Nina Simone, uh, rest in peace. Yeah, she just, uh, the anniversary was yesterday or two days uh, ago? Two days ago, I think. Yeah, two days rest ago. Rest in peace, Nina. Yeah, definitely. In incredible voice. Um, Man. You know, I've been watching documentaries lately about, you know, our history, black history, and, you know, from the time we arrived on the shores pretty much up to now, and everything that we've been through. And, and they show, you know, from Reconstruction, pretty much up until Civil Rights, they show, you know, the images of Emmett Till and our brothers and sisters being, you know, murdered, violated, hung, all those different things, right? Mm. Um, castrated, um, in some cases. Um, Thrown to the alligators. Yeah. I just think, like, you see all of those racist white men, you know, standing around and looking up and smiling at, you know, the yeah, black men yeah. being hung from the tree. Mm -hmm. People fail to realize, like, we all come out the same way. Mm. We, we all come out, we might be a different shade, but we all come out the exact same way. Agreed. The exact same. So what makes you think that you're so different from this other group just because of their skin color? You know, it's just, it's amazing how even to this day, a lot of people still feel that and harbor that, even with it being taught to you, because it has to be taught mm -hmm. down people still don't think eh, that's not really right but then you're a product of your environment they, they use that a lot with black people I don't get why they don't use that a lot with white people either hmm. it's funny you say that because in this same message I kind of I cut it out but he talked about uh, Greek mythology and um, the Roman way mm -hmm. Rome remember the Roman Empire took over the whole world at one point that same thinking or what they thought. Or what they thought, yes, thought, exactly. What they thought was the whole world. Yeah, we had facts, facts, facts. But that same thinking of one race being superior than the other mm -hmm. is still here. Now, when I say God chose a people, I never said we were superior. I just say he chose a group of people. Never said we were better than them. Never said none of that, you know. Mm -hmm. But they say that all the time. Hence the white supremacists. That's mm -hmm. superior in supremacists, you get what I'm saying? So right. just just yeah. look that up. Look it up. Yeah, it's it's you know it's just crazy that people think that way. When we all came from, i.e., Mother Earth, um, which you know what we smoking right now is um is is geisha and strawberry margarita. Mm, yeah. That's that. So, uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah so I got that. So that's that mix. But yeah, just you know, yeah, it has Mother Earth, man. We, we I like all, that. We all come come from a mother's womb. You got a pen? I gotta write that down. <laughs> my pen at? Shoot. Dang, I'll write it down later. I like that name for it. That's a stick every time you mix right. these together. That stays, man. Fact. So that is our shisha of the day, people. Yep. Uh, geisha mixed with strawberry margarita. And we call that mother. Like it. HL News. Again, when we get into sports, what's happening in culture, what's happening in politics, and we end with society. The sports. Um, so first up, uh, Tiger Woods um, was in a car accident yesterday. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just want to send out our prayers. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, regardless of you know uh, the feelings that he has put out and the thoughts that he has put out, um, you know, towards being black or being represented as black, um, the man is still. Black, your father's black, your mother's black, you're still black. Right? Don't matter. Easy. Um, you know, it just, it's crazy to think that this man went through a whole bunch of different back surgeries and neck surgeries and different things. Um, and it just seems like after everything that, um, that transpired, you know, it's just been a lot that's yeah. happened to yeah. Tiger. You know, there's no more... It was winning major after major after major, and I was like, you know, yeah, you know, surgery after surgery after surgery, controversy, and 
controversy and okay I went again and then this people this. come back around and then now you're in an accident you know it's just it's tough so uh, definitely sending out prayers uh, yeah. to Tyra Woods um, and his family especially his kids um, and just hope that you know um, everything definitely will be all right you know we, we don't you know everybody's got to go you know we you know, it, it sucks because now I feel like we're getting, to, we're gonna start getting to the point where we're at that age where we're gonna start losing a lot of our black legends. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, we lost, you know, Michael Jackson and Prince and Whitney Houston, and, but you know, they were prominent at a time where we weren't uh, alive. You know, really 80s or or even early 90s when yeah. we were young. Yeah. Um, but you know, we saw. Tiger Woods win. We saw Serena Williams yeah. win. We've seen LeBron and you yeah. know, all of them win. Like, you know, we saw Kobe, Kobe yeah. win. Um, so you know, it's mm. just it's it, you know, it's just tough. So definitely wishing him a re uh, speedy recovery yeah. for real. For real. Um, now with the NBA, I mean, we were just talking about this a little bit off air, um, yeah, especially with our boy Kenny. Shout out to King. Yeah. Um, For me, the NBA has become unwatchable. Why do I say that? I just feel like people call it the LeBron effect, but these super teams, these mega teams, yeah, LeBron went to Miami, teamed up with Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh. But again, they weren't a powerhouse, i.e. as what Kevin Durant did with Golden State. Now Kevin Durant has done it again, okay? Um, and when the playoff comes, I don't care what Brooklyn's record is. When the playoffs come, everybody's 0-0. Zero, zero. <laughs> and that's a fact. You can could, you could be 40 and 40, or 42 and 40, what is it, 41 and 41. But playoffs come, it's 0-0, zero, zero, and you could end up being 16-0 and, mm -hmm. and win it all. Um, I just think that this is really going to be a trend where you're going to have the same team over and over and over again. When in the NBA, it's a lot easier because literally you all you need is, I mean, LeBron showed all you need is one guy at least to get you there. But you definitely need at least two to win. Now guys are teaming up in threes and possibly even fours, um, which is just making it not competitive uh last year was the first time in a long time Agreed. even before lebron people forget that 08 boston celtics formation people Stacked. forget people forget charles barkley in houston even though he was late in his career still the lakers in yeah. 04 they mm -hmm. lost to the pistons yeah but excuse me gary payton carl malone, carl malone, malone yeah. kobe and shaq on your squad <laughs> You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> right. You know, people forget about those teams. Even teams that were built from the draft. The 80 Celtics, are you kidding me? Mm. With Bird, McHale, and Parrish? All, and, all the and, famous. Oh, and by the way, let's get Bill Walton. <laughs> uh, let's get our boy uh, DJ from right. Seattle, uh -huh. Hall of Famer. You know, um, I just think it's, it's become real competitive. Also, white head coaches. Mm. Okay, there's still a majority of the league is white head coaches, but the fact that people like a Steve Nash or a Steve Kerr can get immediate, um, you know, uh, immediately get the the head coaching jobs where you can potentially immediately win a championship, yeah. while black head coaches who built teams up, i.e., Mark Jackson, or win a team with just you know one or two guys like a Tyron Lue did incredible eyes coming down from 3-1 mm. yeah you have to have talent but coaching is still a thing oh yeah you still have to coach oh, and yeah. if you're not necessarily coaching x and o's you're putting this person in at the right time oh, right. that person in it right. not playing this person because of the matchups right. so, so i just think that it's unfair and unjust that former white players or whatever you want to call it don't even have any coaching history automatically getting these type of, of, of jobs. So it just all coincides. Um, 
I don't like how they did the All Star Weekend. Like LeBron said, why are we having an All Star Weekend? You know, bringing us all together. Okay, what if one of us or somebody catches COVID? Um, so as far as I'm concerned, NBA to me has been very unwatchable. I haven't watched it in a, a grip now. Um, and yeah, so Chief, I, you know, I'll pass it on to you. I know you, you know you're the basketball savant. Um, are you feeling what I'm feeling the same or in a different way? How you feeling about that? Oh yeah, I'm definitely feeling you. Um, especially on the no resume for coaches. Uh, I mean, it mirrors what happens when a la 45 gets the biggest job in America ever. <laughs> you know, with no resume. Hmm. So it makes sense that they inherit um, these positions. Um, it's the NBA is looking more forced. I like my guy Nigel That's said. That's a good word. Um, good word. Right, right. My boy Nigel. Uh, shout out to Nigel, man. He. Hey, win one for us, my G. Um, he said boxing was more business than the sport. Now, I knew basketball was heavy business, but now it's heavy, heavy business. It's hard for them to not show that because of the lack of the business that they're getting. Mm-hmm. So it's showing. That's why they got the All-Star Weekend. They don't care about it. They need that money. Like you said before, they need that, that TV deal. They need that TV money. Um, because they're not selling out concessions no more and all of that. Right. It seems forced. They have what a month and some change off. Now they back. Seemed like last season is just elongated. You know. Mm-hmm. I was talking to my boy, my man Smitty. I said they might as well just start the playoffs now. You know, I'd rather take a. Uh, I know AD not here, but I'd rather take where they are at now. You know, and just go straight to the playoff if anything. Mm-hmm. But it mm-hmm. just seems more forced. Um, and it is tough to watch. It, I can tell that players at, at this time right now is kind of forced. You know, we getting a lot of fifty point games, and that's cool. But look at the stat line. Look how many points. I mean, look how many shots they put up just to get there. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. No defense. <laughs> no defense. Like, come on. Uh, we get one hundred forty, and I know last year we was kind of getting that, but now it just seemed extra, and I feel like their energy could be put into black economics. Um, True. You know where they started at in the bubble. Mm-hmm. You know, just I feel like business won this time. They knew what more than a vote was gonna do, uh, more than an athlete. What LeBron was doing that thing was gonna catch some some wind and some fire, and it's like let's start the season now. You know, it's hard for me not to believe that big business wasn't here. Right, that. and right. that's what I'm stuck on. It's just so forced, and it is. It's a basketball guy. It's hard for me to not pick up the basketball and do something with it before I put it down. To say that it's unwatchable, but I agree. The league is unwatchable right now. It's kind of tough to say, oh my gosh, this game is playing. I got to watch it. Yeah. Remember back in the day when we used to do that shit? Mm-hmm. We used to be like, yo, we got to watch this game, that game. I'm, it's not It's not there for me this time either. Yeah, because, you know, especially after last year, you literally had, even though, okay, Curry was hurt and Durant was hurt. We get that. Um, but you still had a whole bunch of good teams, yeah. you know. And the two-guy system, like you said, was right. making it better to watch Dame and them play and all of that stuff. Exactly. It was more fair. Yeah. Um, and, and you would think after all of the years of teaming up and doing this, all right, we finally get a year where it's just, it's feel like it's back to the early 90s, right? Like, all right, you, you got Jordan and Pippen, we got Hewing and Stark, so <laughs> right. we got Reggie and the Davis <laughs> right. brothers, or, or true, you know, true. Shaq and Penny. True, true. You know, like now it's just like, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's on, like you said, a force is a great word, uh, especially starting it with 70, literally 70 days at the, it's very full, you know, y'all just trying to, you know, get this money up and, and also it's, it's predictable, like ding, it's, ding, it's, ding. it's gonna, it's, it's going to, and we said this last year it's, it's, but it's going to be one of those LA, LA teams in Brooklyn <laughs> period like last year you really didn't know who might come out the east and play the Lakers and oh what a surprise we get Miami Heat show up which you call yeah you I call mean it. but still it could have been anybody that's true it could have it should have been the Bucks it could have been the Celtics or the Sixers you know or the, you know but the Sixers got hurt so yeah. that was understand but you know, in the sixes now, they look really good this yeah, year. But you know, like I said, it's 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 just it's not a 
even playing field. Yeah. Um. Af- after the after last year, after the year that we had, you know, it was like I said, I don't if if certain moves was made, I might or not made rather, I might feel a little differently. But yeah, it's just you know you know you know what's gonna happen. Yeah. You know what's gonna and like you said, why prolong the inevitable? Let's just start the playoffs. Let's start the playoffs. We should already play the playoffs because listen, it's nothing against the NBA because I love Kyrie game, I love LeBron game. I love KD game. I love the game. Like Curry. Curry's game. Yes, Dame. Dame. Dame's yep. game. D book. All of these games. Uh, of course, Westbrook. I just love their game. Jimmy Buckets. Exactly. I can pull from them and take it into life because they just out there. You know, in the way that they carry, this, carry themselves in character form. But it, it is tough to watch as big business take over. Yeah. Facts. Facts. People in culture. That's a big one. Right? right? So... When we talk about culture, right? We talk about influence and and you know and what people are listening to, what people are wearing, what um what identifies with what particular group, right? Hmm. Um the and and all of those things is like, you know, what do you call it? The the spider Thing, right and cultures in the middle. Oh, true, right? true, true. The Fourteenth Amendment <laughs> should be in that same spider web. <laughs> okay. Now, some of y'all may have or may not have already watched Amend uh, about the Fourteenth Amendment, hosted by Will Smith uh, on Netflix. Right now, it's five or six parts. Um. And literally, they go through the significance of the 14th Amendment before and after, right? So the 14th Amendment, okay, let me get the correct definition. There's four sections. I'm going to read the the first one because the first one is every time, yeah. All persons, all persons born or naturalized in the United States of America mm. and subject to the um, jurisdiction thereof are citizens mm. of the United States mm. and of the state in which they reside. No state, <laughs> no state, all right? So that's the first part. No state shall make or enforce any law. No, no state. No state. No state, no, no state. state, bro. Shall inf- shall make or enforce any law which shall oblige the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. No state. Nor shall any state deprive any person mm. of life, of liberty, or property without due process of law. Law or deny to any person within its jurisdiction mm. the equal protection equal of the laws. Sheesh. That's in paper form. That's signed, baby. That's there. That's in the United States Constitution. Mm. Okay? And there's a whole bunch of amendments. Yeah. Alright. Um But this one was signed and adopted in 1868, okay? Excuse me, that's signed, sealed, and delivered. Mm -hmm. That's real, Mm -hmm. that's there. Now, you know, we all know about the first four, freedom of speech, bear arms, you know. Um, You know, we know about the Emancipation Proclamation, 1919, women's right to vote, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 64 civil rights, Mm -hmm. um, you know, all those different amendments that that have, have gone into law. This one, again, is in the middle of the web. Wow. This one sets precedence for everything. Now, let's think about history. (laughs) If no state shall make or enforce any law which shall oblige the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, Every person 
in the South that is murdered, that is killed, that is hung, that is tortured, that is assaulted, that is violated, that is ripped people out of their homes, that is burned down homes, not in just the South, everywhere in the United States. I don't give a damn if these people are dead. They need to be brought to justice. You can have a court case and throw people's names in there and that can still go on the books as documented that so-and-so who is dead contributed to, uh, I don't know, the, the massacre in Tulsa. Mm. I don't know who uh, killed Emmett Till, who those guys got off by the way. Mm. Um, I don't know who killed all, you know, all the, the millions of black people, men and women and children mm. throughout the South during Jim Crow. Mm. All of that in the 14th Amendment, with this 14th Amendment states, all of that. How, how, do, how do we get to that point? <laughs> there were court cases that happened. So this is what's important that people need to know. These Supreme Court cases set precedent, okay? For everything, like we watched, um, we watched Hip Hop Evolution. And I don't know if you remember the episode with um, Uncle Luke. Okay. You remember? You watched that one with yeah, me, right? Yeah, I watched okay. that one with you. And how they were trying to get him because of the, you know, the, the vulgar language he was yeah. using in his yeah. music. Mm -hmm. But that shit went all the way to the Supreme Court. Now, he was able to win because of the First Amendment, freedom of speech. But had he not, any music... After that ruling, especially within rap, hip hop, rock, where you get a lot of cursing and vulgar language, nobody would be able to, everything would have been Walmart copies. Mm. Mm. You know, the True. old Walmart Best Buy copies True. you get with no cussing? True. Everything, would, because a court case was already set. Now, what mm. happened with, in these situations, right? There were court cases. Now, I can't remember the exact, I think it was, I, I wanna say it was a slide, but there was another one as well. The Slaughterhouse cases and then there was another case where pretty much the Supreme Court justices at the time stated that the states could pretty much, we, we're gonna, you know, disregard the 14th Amendment. No, states can handle their people, basically, how they want to handle their people. Now, this case happened a couple of years after the 14th Amendment went, in, went into law, okay? But cases like this automatically throw out 14th Amendment. They That's completely crazy. disregard that. That's crazy. Ultimately, which sets up Jim Crow laws in the South and other, you know, laws, it, it, again, the violence and all that wasn't just happening in the South. Hmm. The South was just out there with it. Yeah, they ain't care. But North, the North, uh, West Coast, they were all discriminating. And, you know, riots was happening, then massacre, all those different things was happening everywhere. But the South, like I said, they were just blatant. They ain't give a shit. Um, but yeah, so I say that to say, I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm pass to you, Chief. The, the, the significance of the 14th Amendment is, is real, it's very important. I recommend everybody, everybody, watch that documentary. Um, it, 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 again, it talks so, it talks about, it goes through black rights and, and the, the violations that black people met. Then it also talks about women. And how, again, I just said it earlier, 1919, Women have been in this country just as long as black literally. people. 1919, they they have to, um, you know, put into law the right to vote when this clearly says that everybody born here has equal protection. Oh, man. That's crazy. Let me, let me, let me yeah, let me, because I, I can go, I can go, on. I want, yeah, I want you to just, chime in. It's, it's sad, right? Because it says that, right? But pretty much the constitution of any of these things was created without our interest in mind. 
Matter of fact, they wrote up that we were three fifths of a human, hmm. human being. So they didn't write, but I'll read this to you. Maybe you heard me say it before. Maybe you heard Amrock say it before, but I'll read this to you real quick. Oh, what? White people ain't shit. No, I'm stop. Right. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm just His jo- words. I'm just joking. His white words. People. I'm just joking. It says, all we say to America is be true to what you said on paper. Hmm. He said, I'll tell you who is he later, but he said, mm-hmm. if I lived in China or even Russia or even a totalitarian country, look that up, maybe I could understand some of these illegal injunctions. Maybe I could understand a denial of certain basic First Amendment privileges because they hadn't committed themselves to that over there. They haven't committed themselves to that over there. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. Somewhere I read of the freedom of press. Somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest for right. And I will add, like the 14th member that said, go ahead and give it to him, the life, liberty, liberty and property. I would like to add that into this Martin Luther King hmm. uh, quote. All we say to America is be true to what you said on paper. That's all I really got to say about that one. And yes, it was the slaughterhouse. That's, thank you, Chief, for that, by the way. It's, thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> but yes, it was the slaughterhouse cases <laughs> in 1873. Now, let's, 1873, let's, let's, okay. let's, go, let's go back. 14th Amendment was, was brought into law in, uh, when? Uh, July 9th, 1868. So literally... Years. Four, four years and ten months later. Okay, four years and ten months. In 1873, hmm. it was decided, officially decided, in the store in the slaughterhouse cases, that um, the Supreme Court decision that held that the privileges or immunities clause, which is in the 14th Amendment as well, and there's different clauses that also balance all of that shit out, right? that the privileges and immunities clause of the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution only protects the legal rights Mm. that are associated with federal U.S. citizenship, not those that pertain to state citizenship. So that case, that ruling, which because the Supreme Court ruled on it, is now sets, um, uh, it's, the word just left me. Precedent. Precedent. Oh, yeah. Thank you. That sets that hmm. completely undermines what the Fourteenth Amendment said. How can Supreme? How can people <laughs> get away with that? I tell you how. Because they were all white men at the time. Hmm. Hmm. Old crumbly looking motherfuckers too. Like hmm. they just look like they just look like evil. Hmm. Okay. Um. But cases like the slaughterhouse cases are what set up Jim Crow, what set up the literacy test for voting, what had to um, set up Brown versus Board, civil rights, again, the women's right to vote, all of these different things. If we just went by what the 14th Amendment said, that was can, you, first. can you imagine, can you imagine how history would be altered my g that's incredible and 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 will smith in 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 the documentary he literally says at the beginning i didn't know anything about this and once i found out it was like i had to share this with the world Mm. because this shit is yo y'all talking about emancipation proclamation lincoln freed the slaves which he didn't he didn't really want to no no the Fourteenth Amendment and what and the clauses within that and the Supreme Court cases that followed after that is really, really what's key and critical, um, you know, in American history. That's so crazy. That's crazy. Please check out that documentary, man, and also do your research. As yeah. we always say, do your research, follow up, because um, I'm I'm still gonna keep learning about it because it's Fact. it's so much within these documents and amendments that we have to know and learn. Um, you know, anytime you you are violated in your state, hey, Fourteenth Amendment. <laughs> right, look it up. Fourteenth Amendment. That's true. 
you know again just think about how much like we may have not gotten that i have a dream speech or those quotes from mount or rosa parks having this or all of these different things throughout history that's true had had the supreme court at that time hmm. honored the 14th amendment mm, that's deep bro. that's deep politics people um mm. you know i i don't know if we'll talk too much about this yeah this but, one could be short and sweet but it's important to just bring this up um you know there was a a ruling on the donald trump um impeachment case specifically dealing with his um role within you know the proud boys and girls um uh, storming the Capitol, um, basically taking that shit over. Um, Republicans refused to indict Donald Trump, okay? Which, not surprising, all right? Um, you know, we see that all the time where, you know, uh, black men or women are killed and, you know, this, the, the, the courts decide not to, attorney generals or whoever decide not to prosecute or bring charges. Hmm. Um, but instead, they're trying to blame three former now, former Capitol uh, security officials um, who then turn around and blame one another. Of course. Um, and then also basically state that they had poor intelligence. Like, pretty much they didn't know that all of that shit was going to go down. Yeah, we didn't know either. We, but we also um, didn't know what... BLM was gonna do right, but how did they set up the capital for that? Man, every branch of government had their army out there. <laughs> so what's the difference? You already know. Oh, so you're telling me you had intelligence on BLM, and what was that intelligence? Was it some J. Edgar Hoover shit where you know, oh, you know they're dangerous and we gotta destroy the Black Messiah, or, or what? What was it? Because y'all was set it up and booted up. Like Chief said, around all federal buildings. That's right. There's, there's photos and video to show that. If you don't believe us. So what intelligence, I would love to know what intelligence you had on BLM mm -hmm. when they were simply protesting for police to stop killing black people. Again, not saying that if a black person does something wrong, they can't be arrested. Mm -hmm. Again, 14th Amendment. Right. <laughs> Right. What does the Fourteenth Amendment right. say again? Right. If you didn't hear it the first let's, time, let's go. Let's go back. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall oblige the privileges or immunities of the citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, and property without due process of law. Mm. What is that? But. When, when we see police killing our black brothers and sisters, is there is there a due process of law there? Hmm. It's never, never due process. Never, never. So, hmm. you know, I bring that up to say a lot of people don't know or don't even really care about what happens in politics. And I feel you because most of us are like, they don't do right by us anyway, you know? Even poor white people, yes, I'm talking to you too. Mm -hmm. As we as we saw in Judas and the, they don't, he said, yeah, they gonna come after us first. Once they done with us, who you think they gonna come after? Exactly. That's why we gotta team up. Y'all just a minority as we are. If you ain't green, there it is. So, you know, we, like I said, we probably won't spend a whole bunch of time. Of course, Chief, I'm gonna let you respond, but you know, I wanted to bring that up so the people know. Listen, this is this is how they're attacking this. Trump clearly came out and stated he was basically leading the charge. Okay? Thing about mm -hmm. politicians especially, or anybody who gets on the CNNs and we was talking about Dr. Fauci earlier. They tell you the truth. Just gotta hear. You just gotta. You just gotta listen. 
You just gotta listen. That's true. Remember, remember before the year when we when we expressed on the podcast, the HL podcast, that is, that there will be a lot of stuff happening. We got January 6th after that, um, when they rushed that building. Mm-hmm. To not just to rush the building, there were electoral college votes in there. They and were trying to get that and destroy it. Important documents. Important and- documents, yes. We don't know what left that <laughs> building. <laughs> This is that same thing. Those chess pieces that we said that will be moved, that will be very effective, is still here. For them to switch that quick, yes, we need to indict them, yes, blah, blah, but then when they get down to it, like we say when the camera's on, it's time to perform, and they did not perform, that's the chess piece. Hmm. You know, he got a few of them, them pawns we like to see in his pocket to say, nah, we good, you know, because they money flow would get hurt. You know, it's just... I guess I'll leave it with this and I'll let you say it. That quote, that politics quote that um, Fred Hampton said. Uh, politics, oh. yes. Give them that and we can end it. So, <clears throat> the late, great Fred Hampton, rest in peace, brother. Um, yes. Stated, and I quote. Well, he asked the question, what is war? War is politics with bloodshed. Mm. But what is politics? Politics Mm. is war without bloodshed. Do you understand? Mm. We can say less off of that one. (laughs) And real quick, real quick, you hear me say a lot about states. You know, if these people were smart, <laughs> District Columbia is a district. Right, not a state. Not a state. If these people were smart, but obviously these former Capitol security officials don't know their constitution either. Mm. It's funny how you're working in the Capitol building. But we'll just leave it at that. Right. <laughs> um, and lastly, with society people, um, a case that I did not uh, know about. Um, I don't know if you knew, Chief. Uh-huh. I had to look it up. I didn't see that either because I was on um, those three kids, two of them that got killed by that, by yeah. that guy, in Joseph something. Indiana or something? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, Fort Wayne, out of nowhere, just yeah. blasting them. So, yeah, I was stuck on that. I didn't hear this either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, Daniel Prude, okay, uh, was a 41-year-old black man. Um, he was uh, lived, you know, residing in Rochester, New York. Um, he was uh, physically restrained uh, by police officers in Rochester uh, before he was killed. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sound familiar? Uh, apparently, he had been suffering from a mental episode, mental health episode. Um, as they say, he ingested uh, PCP, uh, was walking around naked in the streets of Rochester. Um, mm-hmm. You know, apparently, uh, you know, they said that he tried to spit on them and he was just, you know, he wasn't, uh, um, you know, uh, obliging to the them arresting him or putting him under arrest or whatever, you know, the case may be. Um, and ultimately, they, they, they killed him, okay? Um, murdered him. Those police officers, okay, um, uh, it was it was concluded by New York Attorney General. The so you already know I'm saying the so you already know black Latia Lati, Latia and Trish James hmm. of the Democratic Party. Wow! Announce. Uh, that the grand jury um, declined to charge the seven, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, seven officers who had to physically restrain a 40-year-old on drugs who is naked. Allegedly. You got to get seven people to restrain this man for one. Um, all seven were not charged. 
all seven, not one found to have done some type of harm mm. within. So, so how did he die? What, the, the, the PCP? That could be it. I know people that's on that. Still wrong. The, the autopsy report ruled that the death was a homicide. But then they, you know, want to throw this little thing in there. Of course. Also included, the contributing factors to his death was excelled Del Delorman, um, which is a controversial uh, syndrome, which is a combination of Delorman, um, aggression, sweating, um, you know, potentially wanting to commit suicide, your body overheats. So a condition. And, right. Some he was born with. Okay. And acute asphyxiation of PCP. Mm. Now, we see what the PCP does to people. Of course. And if he was walking naked in the street, that is a sign that, yeah, you was probably smoking on some PCP. Um, but that killed him completely. I can't believe. Well, that was that has to be a contrib. So, because that was ruled in the autopsy, that's the only reason. That's the only thing that the grand jury jurors can sit there and say. Oh well, since the autopsy said it could have also been his pre-existing condition hmm. and the PCT PCP. Well, you know we can't fully hold the police officers responsible. Hmm. So, i.e., another black man dead, more officers get off, they can return back to work like nothing ever happened. Oh my goodness. You know, this is case in point when they talk about the war on drugs, they think the war on drugs was just to stop the drugs from getting in here. No, a lot of the war on drugs tactics was to place them in neighborhoods that's right up the street from us that we lived in um, and to disintegrate a group of people you know, and to put it on them. So whenever you think about a drug, you think about that people to help now, when you say that drug is in the system, it wipes away the fact that he's a human being. Mm -hmm. You know, it reminds me of uh, Elijah McClain. He mm -hmm. didn't have no drugs on him. They administered something to him uh, oh, and they overdosed him and he died. You get what I'm saying? It actually came out, I think yesterday, that that was the, the leading factor. They gave, the, the cops who restrained them gave him, they administered this dose of something in him, passed away, what's going on with that. So, I'm not understanding why I get why it's happening. I'm just not understanding how, after you speak about the 14th Amendment and all of that stuff, how this just can walk in. Once again, always resort back to it, it being that idea of what they created in the beginning. We were only three-fifths of a human. So, therefore, dogs, get back. go shoot a police dog and see what happened to you. Do something to any animal and see what Peter do to you. You know, it's just, they get more laws than we do. They get more uh, empathy than when we do. They get a lot of more stuff. We just, we cattle to them. Yep. And that's what it boils down to. <clears throat> Was there due process of the law? <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. Some reactions. Um, John Prue, Daniel's brother, um, denounced his killings as a cold-blooded murder, um, asking how many more brothers got to die uh, for society to understand that this needs to stop. Miss hmm. um, James, the Attorney General, uh, she actually said that it was a tragedy um, that this happened. Really? Uh, Rochester's Chief of Police claimed that the delay in releasing video evidence was not a cover-up and he understood that the frustrations of Prude's death. Okay. He said, what? The, the delay of the release of the video? There was what? apparently a delay of the video evidence. They were body cameras. Right. There's cameras in the cars. But the delay wasn't to, you know, oh shit, we gotta edit this. Uh, we gotta change that. No, it was, you know, it, it wasn't a cover-up. So what was the delay for? I can't believe that because I can take this video right here 
fix it up and put it on YouTube in, YouTube in 20 minutes. Hmm. Easy. Hmm. You know, it take them that long. You know why it took and them that the, long. And you're the police department? Come on now. Now, if it was flop and Daniel Prude did something to them, we get that video five minutes later. Quick. Quick. Oh, and we'll get due process of the law with that. Easy. With that. Easy. Uh, rest in peace, Daniel Prude. Definitely, man. Thank you um, for bringing that story up because I did not. I did not know that. Yeah, I, I, you know, I didn't know it either. Um, again, <laughs> another brother lost. Uh, another brother will we have to say rest in peace. Um, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's going to take brothers like us, man. You know, we sit here and, uh, you know, we want to give the people the information. I don't know, man. Like like I said after watching the black, I just, I'll change the quote to say sometimes I feel like we don't do enough okay. or we could do more. Okay. You know, and we could talk about this off air, but maybe it's, maybe it's time. I don't know. Maybe it's time for, for something. For something, man. Because it's, you know, it's... And especially as God is putting us in a position to learn about things like the 14th Amendment. Stuff like that, you know. Like I just said, with Will Smith. He gave it to Will Smith to say, look, a lot of people don't know about this. You're, you know, you're a public figure, yeah. Will. People yeah. love you. Yeah. People will watch this Agreed. because of you, and you can get this message out quicker than a lot of folks you know what i mean yeah. will smith walks into netflix it's will smith <laughs> like whatever you want to do will we will sign off on it literally 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 and he got all his friends i'm telling you when you see it it's a whole yeah, bunch I'm of people whole bunch of people in it like it's incredible like all of the people young and new general mm. you know I'm, I'm sorry young and new young and old right generation young and, new. <laughs> <laughs> young and old generation um of actors and artists and all of that Hmm. You know, I don't know. Like I said, we can talk about it off air, but I just feel like, you know, maybe, 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 yeah. It's yeah. on the way. Um, people, this is HL Podcast, dopest podcast in the DMV, and Rock, that's Chief. Yes, sir. Um, again, people, check out uh, our latest interview um, uh, with Nigel, uh, the new. Uh, soon to be boxing champ. Yeah, that's what we um, call him. Yeah, champ. Going for ten and no. Check that out yeah. uh, on YouTube. Check out all of our previous interviews. Um, and we we keeping it rolling. Yeah, we you are. Know, we keeping it rolling through March and into April. Uh, so definitely check that out. And definitely appreciate everybody uh, who who has been watching as well. Um, uh, one of our guys. Uh, shout out to Chris. Uh, he, CG, you know, yeah. yeah, he he watches a lot of them. So He's definitely shout there. out. Definitely shout out to him. Yo, definitely appreciate that. Uh, your wife's rev. Yeah. Uh, always tunes in. Uh, so yeah, definitely appreciate everybody for tuning in on that. Definitely. Um, our top five or ten. Oh, and we got ten. Oh, we definitely got ten. We got plenty more on this one. Plenty more. <clears throat> we talked about. Judas and the Black Messiah. Uh, again, we wanted to do this last week. We had, a, as Chief alluded to, a lot of technical difficulties. Man, so many y'all don't even want to know. All right. <laughs> y'all don't even want to know. Um, after seeing that movie, I just thought to myself, how many more brothers or sisters were taken down by some form of government? Anywhere. Definitely, you know, specifically within the United States, but anywhere. If you do your research, you will see that that list is long. Endless. And not just black people. There were white revolutionaries as well that were taken out. Again, white people, it's about power. It's about maintaining control and power. So they do not care. <laughs> and I'm talking to the white people that are for, you know, the three-fifths of a person shit, mm. or for women not having rights, or mm. for, you know, uh, 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 you know, the mentally challenged not having particular rights. You know, those ignorant people. We're talking about those ignorant people, mm. okay? Um, but specifically, revolutionaries that were killed by the FBI, by the CIA, by the Klan, 
any other racist, uh, domestic, or international uh, terrorism groups, because uh, that's what they are, or some form of government. Okay. So, um, in no particular order. Right. Mahatma Gandhi. Young Gandhi. A lot of people don't know, that man was assassinated. Bye bye. Assassinated. A man of peace who, by peaceful protests, was able to break India away from British rule. Okay? At a time where Britain is every fucking where. Yeah. Okay? And they're still everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, by, by peaceful protests, he was able to lead India out of British rule. And then that man was assassinated. Mm. Okay? George W. Lee. Okay? He was a... A lot of people don't know who this man was, so I'm going to briefly talk about him. Civil rights leader, a minister, and a entrepreneur. Okay? He was a vice president of the regional council of the Negro leadership. Mm. Okay? He was the head of the Mississippi branch of the... Um, National Association for Advancement of Colored People. Wow. Okay. He was assassinated in retaliation for his efforts into registering black people to simply vote. That's Took that man crazy. out because he tried to get people, his own black people, to vote. Okay. And that was in 1955. Okay. May 7th, 1955. Lamar Smith. Also in 1955, this time in August. Okay, he was a civil rights figure, uh, a farmer, a war, war one veteran, fought for his country. Okay, and an organizer of black voter registration. This man was shot and killed in broad daylight at close range. Damn. Okay, in Mississippi. You like feel that, man. You feel that. Not here's the thing. Can we go back to the 14th Amendment? I knew you was gonna say that because I'm about to say it too. <laughs> Here, here's here's what's crazy. Let's see. I don't want to use the word crazy. My mom always tells me don't use the word crazy. Right. Here's what's sad about this. This man was shot in Mississippi, right? Same year as George W. Lee. 1955, same state, who the 14th Amendment states that right. the state should protect mm -hmm. their citizens. He was shot in front of a courthouse. That's the crazy part about it. In front of a courthouse in broad daylight. Jeez, man. Megger Evans, um, you know, we all know of his story, or most people know of his story. Um, assassinated, um, you know, murdered uh, by white supremacists. They did a whole film on it, Ghost of Mississippi. Um, mm -hmm. Whoopi Goldberg, James uh, Woods. Mm -hmm. uh, James Woods actually starred as, uh, I forget the man's name who killed him. Um, but literally assassinated as he got out of the car of his home. At his home, with his like wife was outside. Yeah. Some, some crazy. Yeah, I think they were in the house and then they heard the shots and yeah. he came, immediately came outside and saw him dead. That's crazy, bro. All right. Living your truth. Thank you. Um, Malcolm X. Yo, guy. Uh, as we know now, and as we've been known, but as we officially right. know now, uh, that uh, the FBI, CIA were part of that conspiracy. As again, as we know, I mean, there's no way. Malcolm always had protection. How did these guys get pulled off of their protection duties? Okay. Um, His house was just bombed. Nobody decided to pat people down. Why is that? Why is that? Mm. Police or some form of government had to have been involved. Period. Vernon Dahmer. Okay. Um, Don't get it confused by... Yeah, definitely don't get it yeah. confused. They're definitely not related to Jeffrey Dahmer. No. Um, but Vernon Dahmer, um, 
a biracial man. Um, his mom was black. Um, uh, and um, who was, she was assaulted by a white slave owner. Um, and that's how he was conceived. Um, again, in Mississippi, good old Mississippi. When we when we start doing tours, remind remind me. Oh, we skipping some yeah, things. Th thank yeah, you, thank you, thank you. For sure. Definitely Mississippi that top of the list. I'm sorry, for Mississippi. Sure. We ain't never coming there. Man. Um, Catch us on unless the it's the protests. <laughs> right. Um, this man, civil rights, uh, you know, movement leader, uh, and the president of the Forest County chapter of the NCAA. I mean, I'm sorry, N NAACP. Excuse right. me. Um was murdered by the White Knights. The White Knights. They had a group. Yeah, those was the White Knights. Y'all you know who the White Knights were? Didn't know. Y'all you know who the White Knights were? The Klan. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. A group, a subdivision. That is within crazy. Within the Klan. Did not know that. These motherfuckers had something. Oh, we got the White Knights over here. We got the Black Killers over there. We got the... You know the, the 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 brown bombers over here. We and they was expanding like crazy. The the church getters over there. Like what the? That's crazy, man. Was murdered um, by the white knights um, of the Ku Klux Klan for his work in trying to recruit black people to vote. Okay, this happened 11 years after. Uh, Lee and, and Smith's murders. Um, I think Mega Evan was was murdered in '55 yeah, as well. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, it's a nice little trend going on here. Mm. So this happened in '66 in Mississippi. Mm. Um, forgive me, I always get uh, uh, cheese. Yeah. I forget his last name wrong. Rivera. Rivera. Um, the great Chi Rivera. Um, Argentinian. Revolutionary uh, author, uh, they call it the uh, call him a guerrilla leader, mm -hmm. uh, diplomat. Um, you know, he was a major figure, major part of the Cuban Revolution. Um, you know, again, just one of those guys who said, "Look, we're, you know, we're tired of people being oppressed. We're tired of European nations coming into our countries and fucking taking over." Okay. Um, nevertheless. He was also taken out, okay? Um, he was a member of office. <laughs> man, that's crazy, man. He was actually a minister of industries of Cuba, a president of the central bank in Cuba, okay? He was also um, captured um, and then ultimately assassinated as well. Mm. Status don't matter. Okay, okay. Um, Martin Luther King Jr., uh, we all know, we all know the story. Um, uh, Stephen Baiko, uh, which we talked about right. on, on a on more a episodes ago, yeah, yeah. yeah, on a previous episode, yep. And then uh, you know, we'll finish the list by you know talking about who we've been talking about throughout this podcast, the late great Fred Hampton. Yeah, um, we saw you know if you haven't seen the movie. Um, you know, or documentaries. Um, you know, he was poisoned. So the poison, you know, already pretty much killed him. Uh, but then once, you know, the Chicago Police Department, backed by the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, um, and the CIA as well. They right, don't throw right. that in there, but right. they were involved as well. Definitely. Um, was, uh, you know, assassinated in his own home. Um, two bullets to the head. Uh, which again, he was probably already dead because of the poison, but they, they just wanted to make sure because why they they still thought he was breathing. Yeah, over there in uh, war, they call it double tap. Go by and check the bodies. If they ain't gone, bye bye. Um, so again, this list could have been, you know, top five or 100, all right? Um, which is sad, um, but again, this is why we do this, okay? Um, for those names that you may not have known, like the George W. Lees, the Lamar Smiths, the Vernon Dahmers, um, the Steve Blancos, this is why we do this. 
these people need to be remembered that they, most of them simply died for just civil decency, civil rights, the right to vote, the right to just be, as the 14th Amendment states, the right, because I was born here, the right to have the same privileges and immunities as everyone. Life, liberty, property. And not to be murdered. For that. Right. <laughs> but to face due process. Right. If you take me to court and you somehow find me guilty of trying to register on my black people to vote, hey, at least I got my due, due process. Mm. Still wrong, but we can't get a due process? Don't get it that far. So people, that is our top five or 10, all right? Uh, as we always like to do and close out the show a little bit with Ron Rock. What you got for him, G? Uh, things that we've missed. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the former NFL player, Herschel Walker, um, decided to be the voice of black people um, and state that black Americans, he was very specific, black Americans should not receive reparations for slavery. Okay. We should not receive reparations for slavery. He has a couple of interesting quotes. He states, and I quote, we use black power to create white guilt. Um, my approach is biblical. How can I ask my heavenly father to forgive me if I can't forgive my brother? <laughs> I'm gonna stay quiet. <laughs> It's a round walk. I brock. I'm gonna stay quiet. He uh, he added. I already know what you're thinking. He added, reparations teach separation. Slavery ended over 130 years ago. How can a father ask his son to spend prison time for a crime he committed? Hmm. All right, I'm gonna just end it there because uh, the quotes get more ignorant. Yeah, I'm I'm boiling. I'm boiling. Um. Herschel Walker, any other black person who thinks that it's okay for them to speak for the black community, um, you are what they call a cancer. Mm. Because for one, you do not speak for all of us. For two, you are uneducated. Mm. And you went to... Georgia? Georgia University. Yeah. University of Georgia, very prestigious university. You you are an educated man, um, but making uneducated statements. Uh, so that they call coonage. Mm. That's cooning, okay? Mm. When a person is educated and they know, mm. but still choose to ignore the, the truth That's or deep. to or to speak it. That's deep. Um, <laughs> That's deep. I'm still on the reparations teach separation part. So all of the white wealth that they created during slavery didn't teach separation. Is it not separating us now? Is that why we? Has it not? Has it not? Wealth? Has it not separated us over the last 130 years? That's what I'm saying, but okay. Um, Herschel Walker, again, like I said, you, you are what they call a cancer. You are what they call a coon. Uh, you do not speak uh, for the black community. Um, but what is sad is that because he, as others such as like Kanye West, um, who make statements and feel like they're speaking for all of us, what is sad is that you are a public figure. So brothers like yourself, White people would say, oh, well, Herschel Walker said it, and black people love him. No. Nobody said we love Herschel Walker. 
Okay. Most people don't even know that this man played football. Okay. We know. Most people don't know who this man is and why he's talking the way he's talking. Um, but because he's Herschel Walker, right. this is why this shit makes news. If a regular old Joe on the street said, ah, black people don't, that's just not making news. Unless somebody happened to record it and put it on World Star or some shit. And we still not. And that shit will still get passed by because yeah. that person is the average Joe. But because you are Herschel Walker, because yeah. you are Kanye West, yeah. because you are Terry Crews, wow. they will listen to that. And they will think that you are speaking for all of us, which you are not. Mm. Again, you are a cancer, you are a coon, and you, you, and you need to refrain from speaking um, uh, and, and, and thinking that you're representing the black community, mm. okay? And lastly, um, a sad case, uh, but uh, but again, you know, you know, these are things that we have to and need to point out. Yeah. Um, Joe Ligon, uh, believed to be the oldest and longest serving juvenile lifer in the United States, uh, was finally released from uh, Pennsylvania prison, um, literally after serving seven decades in prison. Uh, this man was sentenced to life in prison. Guess at what age? 13. Close, 15. <laughs> 15 in February, 1953. Okay. Uh, for uh, allegedly stabbing and robbing, uh, going on a stabbing and robbing spree uh, with four other teenage uh, boys. Um, apparently the crime left six wounded, two dead, um, and pretty much, you know, let's round up the usual suspects, black teenagers, y'all did it, i.e. Uh, the Central Park Five, uh, excuse me, the Exonerated Five now. Um, for this man <clears throat> to be getting out. He went in at 15. This man is now, this, this, this man missed the Civil Rights Movement, Black Panther Party Movement, even all the, the negatives, you know, the 80s, you know, the 90s, the 2000s. Oh my goodness. In the 2010s. Oh my goodness. He missed all of that history. Wrongfully. To get out at 83 years old Jeez. is a tragedy. Wow. Um, there is no amount of money that this man could receive that can, you know, bring back the years that he lost off of being wrongfully convicted. Um, and not only just wrongfully convicted, just being trialed as an adult at 15. Um, and then to have to serve life. It's just sad. It's just a tragedy. Um, but John Lagon, um, people need to know your name. Um, and, you know, for every John Lagon in prison still, um, people need to know you all's names as well. Uh, John Lagan, or, or if it's Jane Lagan, is black women as well, or women as well in prison uh, for things that they did not do or possibly self-defense for fighting off abusive husbands or whatever the case may be, uh, or, or, or self-defense you know, against their attackers, right? But again, how the law works in America is the other person <laughs> doesn't get convicted, no. They turn to you, okay? Especially when you look like, like this. this, okay? Mm. Uh, so, John Lagon, man, I, I hope and pray that yes. you live out your days in peace. Yeah. You know, just, just live out your days in peace, man. Um, I hope you still have some family around. Um, man, seven you know. years past, though, man. I know. It's, well, what can you do? I 
you know, uh, like I said, there's no, they can give them all the money in the world. That's not going to change shit. It's not. It's, it's not. That's why I'm saying I just hope he lives out his time in peace and harmony as much as he can. Mm. As much as he can. Mm. Um, people, that is our show. That is the HL Podcast. Again, the dopest podcast in the DMV. We thank everybody uh, for viewing and listening. Um, definitely thank everybody for following us on IG, TikTok, and Facebook at the HL Podcast. Please check out the seventh issue of the HL Magazine, which dropped this past weekend, uh, which is still going crazy. It's yep. available right now on the HL Magazine page on, on IG. will be available on the Black Lotus website as well. Um, oh, yeah, and that way, when it goes on the Black, uh, I like to add, it's mm-hmm. going to be in uh, bigger form. So on um, on Instagram we had to fit it so it can fit that. Right. On the Black Lotus I sent it in so you know we can see it in huge form so you get better the color you can read the words a little bit better you just get a whole better experience mm-hmm. by looking at that so when it goes up we would definitely let y'all know. Definitely definitely gonna be dope definitely gonna be dope. Um, rest in peace, Catherine Johnson. Rest in peace. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Rebecca Lee. Um, uh, Crumpler. Crumpler. Mm-hmm. Um, rest in peace, Daniel Prude. Okay. Um, again, praying for a speedy recovery for Tiger Woods. Yeah. Um, and then again, uh, 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 jo- excuse me, uh, Joe Lagan. Um, again, man, we hope you know yeah. that again after all all of these years in prison, you you are able to live out the rest of your life in peace and harmony. Yeah. Uh, people, uh, again, we just thank everybody for listening. As we always like to do in the show, I am Amrock, that is Chief, and Chief, we are out.